Hey guys and welcome back. It's amazing how a small piece of plastic like this can cause so much trouble. So today we're actually going to look at just how much trouble it causes and how we can fix it. So welcome back guys to the classic Saab guy and let's look at a Saab 900 steering column bushing repair. So today we will be working on my 1992 900 turbo 16 valve cabriolet. The thing with this model is it comes with the airbag so the particular repair we're doing today um, does become a little bit more involved because we have to remove the airbag system. So here we can see the symptoms of the problem. If I grab the steering wheel and I can move it up and down and I can also kind of move it side to side. There is this plastic bushing that sits on the shaft, on the steering shaft, and that actually keeps the steering wheel steady on the shaft, kind of sleeves over. This is a piece of plastic that does perish over time. To begin removal of the airbag, uh, we need to loosen the two torque screws at the back of the steering wheel. They will not remove completely, you just need to loosen them and then you'll be able to lift off the airbag. Just as a quick note, uh, do try and make sure that your steering wheel is fairly central when you begin the job. It's possible that when you put everything back together you've moved the wheel a little bit and it will be slightly misaligned. Uh, it's one of those things, it's not easy to do in the field while you're using the car because of the airbag system, you can't just remove it and change it as you go down the road and you know, stop and check. So it might be just a bit of trial and error and removing that airbag uh, to uh, get your steering wheel realigned. Now with the two torque screws loosened at the back, the airbag is now loose. We now gently tilt forward, there is a cable attached underneath and we need to disconnect that. So now that the uh, the um, nuts have been, uh, the bolts, the torque bolts have been loosened, we have here, we are going to disconnect. And if we just lift up, under here is a cable which I'm going to pop out now. There we go. And uh, that's where the cable went. Uh, and there is the plug for the airbag. And that will just go back on there. Now, before we do anything else here, we will need to remove the, uh, the basically the steering column cover at the bottom. You've got a, a torque screw here, and the same on the other side. You just uh, pop those out, and this bottom cover will come off. So the uh, bottom cover is now removed from, uh, basically goes against the knee bolster and covers the uh, um, equipment here around the steering column. Uh, we've removed that. So now is the one of the most crucial things during this repair. Before you remove the steering wheel and loosen the steering wheel nut, and before you do anything like that, there is what we call the horn clock spring behind the steering wheel. I will show you some pictures of that. Um, this looks like kind of like a hockey puck, and it sits right behind um, the uh, steering wheel, and is basically two pieces of round black plastic that sit together with a coil, metal coil inside, like a clock spring, hence the name. Uh, when you remove the steering wheel, those two services take come apart and that spring will just explode. Now to avoid that and lots of extra work, what I tend to do is, before I get anywhere near removing the wheel, I get some tape, usually some duct tape, and I kind of go between the surf, the, the back of the steering wheel and the top of this clock spring and get some tape in there to hold it together while I remove the steering wheel. It sounds a bit kind of tricky and complicated, but actually when you get used to it, it's, it's you know, it, it saves you so much work doing it that way. So um, I'm going to do that now and I'll take some photos. So here is what I was referring to, this black surface here. This is what we call the clock spring. It actually helps to work the horn when you turn the steering wheel. It's that between these two surfaces, it's quite dark I know, but 
this is the back of the wheel and here's the and then there's like a flush surface on the top of this sort of like I said like a hockey puck thing that sits here you get some tape in between and tape it back so that it just keeps these this here is like a where the two the parts come apart and you can just put some tape across here and it just holds it together while you remove the wheel here you can see where I put some tape across that area um, I'll loosen the nut now and then it will give me a, a little bit more gap here and I can put a bit more tape in. I know this may seem like overkill but uh, seriously when that spring comes apart it's so much of a headache. So uh, uh, yeah I'll show you that when I remove the wheel you'll see it more clearly. Okay we're ready to crack the steering nut now. Um, again uh, first of all uh, extension ratchet 22 millimeter socket. What I'm aware of while I do this is the fact that I'm trying to keep my steering wheel central because you turn it, you tend to turn it while you're trying to loosen it because you need to put some uh, counterweight on it. But I hate it when I get everything back together and my steering wheel is misaligned. So I may seem to faff a little, but um, there it goes. And hopefully I've kept my steering wheel central. So um, I'm going to slightly um, loosen the nut. So I can just bring out there. So I brought the steering wheel forward just a tiny bit. So now I can get more tape in there to stop that clock spring. So uh, now I think it's safe to completely loosen this nut, remove, and begin to remove the steering wheel. Now you will have to feed some cables through. You have to disconnect this horn cable, and then you have to feed the uh, end of it through this little orifice here. Uh, so both of those need to be fed through to come out the back so you can remove the steering wheel. So um, I'm gonna remove the steering wheel, feed these cables through all the time being aware of that clock spring not exploding behind me. <laughs> um, so here we go and let's have a look. It seems to be okay staying in position. I can bring the steering wheel forward and I think the clock spring is gonna stay where it is. So I can just feed those cables through. Try not to pull on them. Uh, you know, try not to crush the cables or, you know, just being very mindful of, of the electrics. And the steering wheel is now free. And you can see here all the tape I've put on to stop that spring exploding. It has happened to me before, and believe me, it took me a while to put it back together. And it's just another faffy job you don't really want to do. So a close up here of what we've got. So here's what I say, you can see why I said it looks like a hockey puck. It's uh, attached to the column area by a, a, a Torx uh, screw under here. And I remove that and uh, uh, sort of take off the tape as I go. Uh, and then we'll pull this off the shaft. Um, as I do that, I will tape it completely together and then it will hang here while I can work on the actual repair. You can see now I've taken off this clock spring off the uh, column and uh, have taped it so that spring set thing doesn't come apart. And now, we can see, now we can see more closely uh, the problem with the repair. So you see, yep, and here is your problem behind this, what we call the lock ring. Uh, it looks like the it's come right out of its oh sorry it's come right out of its recess, causing this play. So now we have to get off the lock ring uh, and then take off the old kind of broken uh, um, bushing and put the new one in. I've removed this uh, cover plate. That's just uh, another Torx that comes off, and you can see a little bit more clearly. Uh, again. Everything's all a bit loose in there. Um, and uh, so we're going to take off here and the bushy behind. So I've removed, uh, first of all, the lock ring that goes over the top to hold everything in place. Uh, I have damaged it, but I kind of always do that, which is why I have a spare. Whenever I do this repair, I make sure I have one of everything. They're pretty inexpensive. And like now I've used these, I'll just order probably like 100 crowns in Swedish, maybe 10, 15 pounds in English to get all the parts I need. Uh, and I just they'll just sit in a cupboard until I need it again. Hopefully, <laughs> uh, not for a while. But um, so that's the lock ring, and then here's the old bushing. It's kind of um, yeah, it's not very worn or perished. I think what actually happened was it popped out uh, because the lock ring wasn't in the right 
position that could have been from uh, previous repair. It could have been just uh, the, the face plate that I removed was a bit loose. It can happen over time, I guess. So, uh, but I'm going to put a new one in. Uh, so I've put the new bushing on where it's supposed to go. You can immediately see now that the steering is absolutely solid from what was before. Um, and then I use this. It's just a. This is just kind of like a tool, a plumbing tool. Um, but it ha actually happens to be around the same uh, circumference as the, uh, well, a little bit bigger maybe, of the uh, bushing. And I can then just uh, take my hammer and just lightly tap to make sure that it's gone completely flush in there. And I'll repeat that process when I put the lock ring on. So here we have our new uh, lock ring and that will go over and I will then do the process of banging that into place as well. Now I've reinstalled the uh, backing plate. I actually used a new one because uh, the old one, the tabs broke at the top. Um, again, that cost me like 100 crowns. Again, it's always worth having backup parts uh, when, they, when they're pretty uh, negligible in cost because you don't want to be in this position and have something break and then you're kind of immobile for a while until you get your new part. So uh, new backing plate, I'm just going to fit this, the, uh, I need to fit the, um, uh, the clock spring back on. And there's just a reverse of what we, we did to take everything apart. So uh, now I've, um, I've reinstalled uh, the uh, clock spring and you can see here that I've put a bit of tape just at the edges to hold it together against uh, the instrument cluster cover here. And that way I can put the steering wheel back on uh, feed the cables through. When the steering wheel is quite close, I can just peel off those pieces of tape and the clock spring will not spring into my face. And then we just reassemble. So uh, now I've reassembled the clock spring. Uh, it is important, there is this little um, protrusion here. That is to keep, that actually goes in to the steering wheel. When we, when we, oops. There we go. This is a little uh, rubber bung that goes into the center here of the steering wheel. It does tend to fall out like it did. Um, that actually means so that you can um, center this uh, clock spring into there so that will orient it in the right position. So put, the, uh, the, put this back in and, and then uh, just make sure that you line up the steering wheel with that hole before you push on and then uh, your steering wheel will be in the right place. And I'm hoping that my steering wheel is still center. Uh, so now I've uh, put the steering wheel back on, nut is on, cables fed through, time to put the uh, airbag back on and hopefully when I drive away today my steering wheel is still centered. And with everything reassembled we can now see that the steering wheel does not move. So there you go guys, there was my short how-to video on the steering column bushing repair. I do want to say a big thank you to Murray101 on the Saab Central uh, forum site. The original uh, bushing for this car is quite hard to find these days and they're also quite a, a tough plastic which I think contributes to them failing because they can just dry and go brittle in some way. This chap I met on the site, um, he actually made some 3D printed ones for me which are much more pliable and actually been really really good in a couple of the repairs I've done and I think they hold up a lot better so I just want to say thanks for that Murray that was really great and if anyone wants to know about uh, these 3d printed ones just uh, comment below I hope you've enjoyed today guys and it was useful do like and share don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet and I'll see you next time on the classic Saab guy